Hey guys, Ronald Griffin here for ArtificialAnimation.com and this will be a quick tutorial or more like a quick tip on how to remove the banding from your gradients and uh, if you've never worked with gradients before then this will still be useful for you because uh, if you're in the motion graphic field then you will nearly always end up working with a gradient sooner or later. So a gradient is simply going from one color to another color um, through the range that is between those colors. So you can make a radial um, gradient, which is what we see here. It starts as a uh, dark sort of a red black, um, not red black, but you know, a dark red, and then it, it goes straight to black. And you can see it sort of takes us through the range and then softly goes into black. Now the problem is, if I can show you our other comp here, the problem is this thing, and uh, I don't know if you've actually noticed this before, if you've ever worked with a gradient, um, then you'll probably have noticed that you get these sort of rings, and uh, they're quite peculiar, but the reason for this is because it has to go from one color to the other, and uh, in some workspaces, um, the colors, they're just not enough to make a smooth transition. And so going from this color to black is sort of a, a mischievous task. And this is also a very common problem in web colors. You know, web developers, they have to deal with this as well. So it's important to learn how to defeat it once and for all. Kill it with fire. Uh, because I see a lot of people using gradients and this is sort of their problem. And you just sort of think, man, I had that same problem for two years and I never knew any better. So anyway... Uh, yeah, okay, so this uh, compass is something I set up really quickly to make fun of Apple and Samsung and in the process show off my tutorial. Um, now here you can see there is no banding. Uh, there is no rubber banding. There's no rings. It's it's just smooth and nice and that, that's the way we want it, right? That's what we think will happen when we go to composition, new composition. Uh, we add a new solid. And we go to effect, generate, ramp which is, by the way, what the gradient is called in After Effects. If you're a Photoshop user, it is called Ramp. And we apply that, and we expect smooth, smooth things to happen. But they don't, because as soon as we start changing the color in the center uh, to, let's say, something like this, and then we, we go black in the edges, look what happens. Oh, actually, this is a bad example. Let's go lower, really, though. I'm using a different workspace right now for the colors, which I'll go into in a second. So here you can see, you just get this ugly result and it's, it's just not nice. So to fix this, um, there's a simple feature in the actual ramp itself. It's called Ramp Scatter. And what this does is if we slide it up, it basically induces noise uh, into the color. And of course, you don't have to use this, but it's the quickest way of getting rid of it. And you can see if we, if we just go real high to 512, you can actually see the noise there quite clearly. All it's doing is applying noise. So it would be the same thing as going layer, new, adjustment layer. And we take some a noise. And I'll just make this final. And we put the size all the way down. I want monochrome. What I'm quickly going to do is uh, go into what a color space is with you. Um, we can see we're working in 32 bits per channel. Now, by default, it'll look something like this. It'll be 8 bits, and it will be... It'll, it'll look like this. And this changes quite a lot of things for us. Um, but I just need to change that just to show you sort of the grain working here. So, I've got the grain on, and you can see if we switch the grain off... Uh, the rubber banding is much more apparent, and of course, the grain isn't looking too nice right now. Um, but you can tweak that. Anyway, that's basically what ramp scatter is. It induces grain. So here you can see, it, it gets rid of it quite nicely. So now you uh, you found out about this grain, and that's great. But there is also another uh, tip I have for you. And that is stop working in 8 bits per channel and uh, step it up. Now, this will change quite a lot of things. It changes basically the way After Effects looks at all colors. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this because that's a whole other tutorial in itself. And if you're interested in it, just leave a comment in the comment section and it might be in next week's tutorial. Now, 
what what this what this does is when we change our, our workspace uh, our colors it basically changes everything so right now you can see if we are over here we basically we have a capped value um, white can only be so white um, so it hits a limit of 255 now with another workspace we can go higher than that we can have more than white we can have really really bright white and that that helps us when applying depth of field, you know, blur, stuff like that. It, it makes it more bright. The end result is a lot different. And that's why if you're working with optical flares and different, you know, loads of different compositions and you have different stuff that you need to composite in, a different workspace might not be the best option for you because it might change some things that, that doesn't, it makes it look not right. It, it breaks what you've already done. So I suggest if you're going to work with this, experiment around and... Um, use it from the start otherwise it'll all change so down here we can simply hold alt and click on eight bits per channel and it will change the value we're gonna go up to 32 and if you now hold control and click on that it'll bring up this window and where it says depth you can see we've already selected 32 and working space we're gonna go down to srgb and this is basically um, it's basically a, a, a workspace that goes much wider it's uh, it's sort of the workspace I always use because it allows me um, to go further in, in every project I've done. It's always expanded the horizon of things I could do. And then we're going to linearize the working space. This is very important. Check this box. And it says here, working space, sRGB, will be linearized, modified to have 1.0 gamma. This affects all pixel blending operations, including blending modes. So that means add, screen, overlay, color george, all that. Image resampling and motion blur. A linear working space more accurately reflects how colors blend naturally and may correct halos and fringing when high contrast saturated colors are blended together. So we simply click OK. Bam, we have our... Uh, nice uh, background back now so as you can see the difference is if we go into layer solid settings and we go into the color selector um, if you've never worked with this before you can see we have a broader s sort of a range of colors here everything has changed um, I'll quickly just show you the difference if you're paying attention right now you can see we've got white here it transfers into red now if we were to simply switch off linearize and we went back into the solid settings for our background. You can see it's it's a lot different. The uh, the values have changed. Um, so that there you have it. Really, it's it's uh, just a simple case of switching some buttons on and off, um, and getting rid of that noise is quite easy. Or getting rid of the banding, sorry, is quite easy with just inducing some noise there with the ramp scatter feature. So. I hope you took something from this tutorial. Maybe the tips helped you out and maybe you learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about linear workspace, um, sRGB, Gamma 2.2, all of these things that really, it makes a project a lot better, um, then you can either Google for it. There's some great guides that I learned from on the internet already. Um, but if you'd like me to make a tutorial about it, just go ahead and put a comment in the comment section. So if you liked it, comment, rate, like. Oh, rate, like, what am I saying? Oh, 2006 here. Comment, <laughs> like, uh, subscribe if you want more tutorials. I'm doing tutorials every week now. So if this is your thing, then this is your place. Right, I'll see you in my next tutorial next week. And thanks for watching.